Lesson 13.1a, Finding Theoretical Probability. Experimental probability is the ratio of the number of times an event occurs to the total number of trials or times that the activity is performed. We covered that in Module 12. Theoretical probability is the ratio of the number of ways an event can occur to the number of equally likely outcomes. In the previous lessons, we found probabilities based on observing data or experimental probabilities. We rolled number cubes, used a spinner, or flipped a coin. In 13.1a, b, and c, we'll find theoretical probability as the probability that an event occurs when all of the outcomes of the experiment are equally likely. If we pick one card from a full suit of 13 cards, so let's say we had all the diamond cards, and we pick one with the hope of picking the ace, the probability would be 1 13th. There's one ace, there's 13 cards. Well, if there are 13 cards and four are an ace, we'll have a greater probability of picking the ace as 4 13ths. Here we have two spinners, and they have gems on them. Spinner A and Spinner B both have a green gem on their blue and their red sections. To win, a person needs to spin the spinner, so the arrow will point to a section containing a gem. Which spinner would you pick? Well, Spinner A has two gems in six sections, and Spinner B has two gems in three sections. So here we have a table and it's showing for spinner A and spinner B we have the total number of outcomes, that's the number of sections. Spinner A has six sections, spinner B has three sections, and it shows the number of sections with a gem. Spinner A has two sections and spinner B has two sections and the probability of winning as a ratio as the gems to the outcomes. For spinner A, we have two gems to six possible outcomes, and for spinner B, we have two gems to three possible outcomes. The ratio for spinner B is greater than the ratio for spinner A. We should choose spinner B for a greater probability of winning. We've got a one-third chance of winning with spinner A and a two-thirds chance of winning with spinner B. Theoretical probability is a way to describe how we found the chance of winning. We found the ratio comparing the number of ways an event can occur to the number of equally likely outcomes. This P winning is the probability of winning, of the arrow pointing to a gem as a ratio gems to outcomes. Now, what if the way to win was to not point to a section with a gem? Which spinner would be the best choice? Well, if we don't want it to point to a gem, we would choose spinner A. It has two-thirds chance that we won't land on a gem. Not pointing to a section with a gem would be the complement to this event. It would be not pointing to a gem. So one more time, this P winning equals the number of ways the event can occur over the number of equally likely outcomes. Theoretical probability, it's the ratio of the number of ways an event can occur to, so we can look at this fraction bar, this bar is splitting the ratio as the word to the number of equally likely outcomes. And the complement of the event is the set of all outcomes that are not the event. If winning means the arrow pointing to a gem, the complement would be not pointing to a gem section. And I want you to notice that this word complement has an E. It doesn't have an I. If there was an I here, then that would be a compliment like, I really like your shirt. This compliment is the opposite. It means not the event. 
Now, if you notice, for spinner A, it has six sections of equal size. They're all the same size. See that? Each section. And spinner B has three sections of equal size. They're each one-third of the circle, aren't they? If the sections of each spinner didn't have equal sizes, like here, the chance of winning wouldn't be the same for all sections. We're finished with this lesson. We're going to move on to the next one, calculating theoretical probability of simple events. Have a really good day, and join me for the second part of the lesson. Bye.